Hello everybody, this is Brady here, Visoki Entertainment. I know it's been a while since a lot of you guys have seen me, but I am so excited to have Big Brother 21 coming back. Um, it's glad to see all of you guys. I normally would be live streaming something like this, but I wanted this to be uploaded after Charlie and I do our uh, BB21 rankings video, um, which you heard me reference in that video, and here we are. So. I want to go through, and if you guys were here last year for the BB20 rankings, you'll know that we did the same exact thing, which I showed on the stream as well. Um, I'm just recording this after our, or before our stream to upload after. So um, we're going to go through each and every house guest, um, kind of break them down, um, talk to you guys about how good or bad I think they're going to be for the game, for entertainment value. Um, and, and how I think they're going to interact with other people in the house, as well as a couple patterns that I've seen um, in the house with these house guests, because a lot of these house guests have a lot of stuff in common, and there have been some some theories thrown out there, and uh, I'm, sh I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit. So once again, apologies for not streaming this, but please leave all the comments uh, down below about if you agree with something I said, if you disagree with something I said, I know everyone's up to their own opinion, and that's the great thing about Big Brother is that everyone's going to love different people, um, and I can't wait to be proven wrong with a lot of these uh, a lot of these hot takes that I'm really taking. This is just my first impressions of all of these guys. So, uh, first we're going to go through. We got Holly Allen. She's uh, 31 years old from Wyoming. She currently lives in Los Angeles, and she's a wine safari guide. So um, I'm not going to go through each and every one of these um, questions and stuff because it's going to just take forever if I try to do that. But um, for some of her favorite activities, fostering dogs, hiking with wine, that's literally her job, um, road tripping, camera in hand. Um, the most difficult thing about living inside the Big Brother house, I live on my phone. I'm a millennial, and uh, it will be a struggle. And this is going to be one of those patterns that we talked about, that and the dogs. So um, we'll talk about that. Um, what would you like to take in the house? Her dog. Um, I rolled off on a 30-foot cliff in a pickup truck and survived. Nice. Um, so uh, first impressions, obviously, she's a very attractive woman. Um, so obviously, she's going to get the uh, the hot thing. Let me, let me currently break down some of these things to you guys. So if we flip over to the Excel sheet here, which should always be up on your screen, um, I'm going to go through, and I basically just have some things, some common things that we're looking for or maybe not looking for within the game of Big Brother, and I kind of give them checks and minuses, and this is how I've built my rankings, which you guys already saw, um, obviously. So the first thing uh, is just their name and age. That doesn't really affect anyone, uh, except for when we get to, you know, like Cliff down here, maybe some of the ones that are 22 years old. Um, so obviously, um, you want a lot of these checks um, in, in the first four boxes. You don't necessarily want these ones in, uh, in the next ones, I mean, fan is just kind of, you can make your own choice. And sometimes being a floater can help in the game, too. It just all depends on the person. So the first thing with Holly, uh, she doesn't seem to be too incredibly athletic. And she, um, you know, mental game, some people always surprise me. But um, she's definitely attractive and friendly. I think her interview with Jeff went really well. Now, her biggest strength to me is that she's very friendly. She seems to be a people pleaser. She's always looking to get on people's good side and stuff like that, which I think is, you know, obviously important. Um, and I think that her biggest weakness is that she's probably going to need a partner. Leave me alone. She's probably going to need a partner um, in the game. She's going to need an alliance because I don't think she's someone that is going to be flying solo, winning a ton of competitions. You know, she's going to have to find someone to link up with, which we see as a common thing in Big Brother. Um, some general comments uh, in in the typed interview that she had. She says, "I haven't watched enough Big Brother to have a favorite, but also claims she's a fan." Um, when Jeff asked her in the interview, Jeff Schroeder, who's doing all the interviews, you can go watch those on CBS.com, um, and she says that she's a fan to Jeff face to face. She seems very scatterbrained, um, and she's a little too worried, in my opinion, about what other people think about her. Um, and then another little thing is she, she ended up growing up on a ranch, so hopefully she's a little more thick-skinned than kind of how she presents herself originally. Um, but it's just, it seems to me like this is someone where, if you didn't know, these house guests get put in sequester uh, for a week or two before, before they actually end up on the show. And... 
I think that she didn't really watch the show like at all. I think she was probably a recruit. And then they give them some seasons of Big Brother to watch. And then when Jeff asked her, like, is she a fan? She's like, oh, yeah, I'm a fan. Even though in her typed interview beforehand, she's like, no, I haven't I haven't really watched much Big Brother. I haven't watched enough to have a favorite. You could literally watch one season and pick someone that was your favorite from that season and say that person. So um, I think that she she's a little too um, worried about what other people think of her. So next up, we have David. I'm going to scoot over here. We have David Alexander here. Uh, he's 29 from Atlanta, currently lives in Atlanta, and he's a photographer. Um, I like his three adjectives, positive, charismatic, and high energy. He's into CrossFit, so you know that he's going to be naturally pretty athletic. Um, and something that he he mentions over and over again, both in text and in the face-to-face -face interview, is that um, he, has a sh he has a routine that he goes through every single day. He does basically the same thing every day. You know, humans, we're creatures of habit. And he seems to be very worried about breaking his routine and how that's going to affect him. Um, some things that he'd like to bring in there, device of the music playlist. A lot of people say they'd love to bring some music in there and a book. Um, so he went to school with Migos, very interesting, and he's never owned an automatic vehicle. Um, he's, always, he's always kept it old school with a manual car. I kind of like that. Um, and then something about his perfectly straight teeth. It's a little weird. So br breaking him down over here, um, it looks to me like he has the four basics that you want. I think he definitely is a good-looking guy. Um, you know, he's got a really good smile. Obviously, he's got perfect teeth or whatever. Um, he was very well spoken with Jeff. He was coming in with a plan. Um, I think he's going to be a great uh, competition. Uh, maybe not a beast, but I think he's going to be one of those people where once the big threats, physical threats get out, I think that David might be like the lone person left and he's just going to roll through some of the, the weaker physical competitors. I don't know what's going on with this. Um, so I think that his biggest weakness is that he wears his heart on his sleeve and and he likes things his way when someone complains that much about being out of their daily routine it worries me because nobody is used to living with strangers for three months at a time four months at a time no one is really prepared for that um but who knows maybe maybe david uh will do okay um it seems like he's very politically motivated. So in his interview, he told Jeff that it will be hard not watching the news every day. Um, and he seems very concerned about messing with his, quote, daily routine, as I've said before. Um, but he was like, oh, I'm very big into politics. I make sure I watch the news every day. I stay informed, which is good to stay informed with politics. But if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person, um, talking politics in the house can really, really get you in trouble. Um, because there are people from all different walks of life in the house, and I feel like if you're too politically motivated, that could end up hurting you. Over to our third person, we've got Nicole Anthony. A lot of people are already saying, oh, great, another Nicole, and she's kind of quirky and nerdy. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's them typecasting. We know that CBS does have a tendency to typecast a little bit. Uh, she's 24 years old. She's from Long Island, New York. Um, start, start taking note of all the people from New York and New Jersey in this. That's all I'm saying. Um, so she's hardworking. She says she's hilarious, cracks herself up. Um, she's, she's very, she's into this stuff. Zen, you know, listening to music, it's very Zen. Um, notice how long her answers are typing. I think that's very indicative of how much she's going to talk in the house. A lot of people put like a couple word answers and they, they're kind of secretive. She is going to be a chatterbox for sure. Um, she, she has a strategy. Um, my strategy for winning the game is to play, um, as authentically and as objectively as I can. I want to stay true to myself, connect with people, connect with people on real personal levels while also remembering to play the game non-emotionally for what it is. Um, and then over to just kind of what I think. I think she's very smart. Um, she's coming in with a game plan and, Normally, you'd say, well, of course, everyone comes in with a plan. There are a lot of people in this season that are not coming in with a game plan at all. They're just happy-go-lucky, happy to be here, you know, doing whatever. And and all there's maybe five people that I looked at, and I'm like, okay, they've got a plan. They know exactly what they want to do, and if their plan goes the way that they want, then they could win the game. Now, it is hard to, to keep a plan exactly how you want it, but um, she is coming in with a plan. 
I I think she she said uh she has tendency to be a little abrasive. Anyone that has the check mark over here, not exactly what we're looking for. Um, because you might end up blowing up, but who knows? I mean, Josh won the game, and he was the most abrasive person of the season. So, uh, she's a big fan of the game. Come on, Jesus Christ! I hate Excel. So, um, she thinks she might have an issue with biting her tongue in certain situations. This is something she told Jeff. Now, once again, that is a big red flag to me. I think she's not. She's not someone that people are going to be like, oh, she's super hot. And I don't think she's going to be someone where everyone's like, oh, my gosh, she's the most hilarious person in the house. You know, she's this, she's that. I don't think people are going to fall in love with her that much. Um, to, so if she says the wrong thing too quickly, she she's out, you know. Um, I said she's very confident but could end up playing the game too quickly. Uh, she constantly mentions her, quote, New Yorker coming out, um, which might be hard for her to find an alliance, um, which I did type this when she was only the third person, and we're going to talk about that. Um, as we move on about alliances next up we have tommy if i can scroll over so next up we have tommy this is our second new yorker he's from staten island new york and he's a broadway dancer um he's optimistic driven and over the top his favorite activity first one he listed was eating his mom's cooking um going to the movies alone and playing Catan with the family so uh, you know i i automatically if you guys didn't know i'm a music teacher i i've got a soft spot for people that are in music i think uh i think he is one of the most um well-spoken people in the house he um is going to be able to use his experience with working in ensembles on broadway really well i i haven't completely made my rankings yet and you guys already saw that live stream and video and stuff but uh, i think i'm probably gonna rank him pretty high um he really liked Davon from season 17 and 18. I love how he mentioned that um, when Davon returned in season 18, she did a much better job at keeping her mouth shut. Uh, in the end, she could only hold it in for so long. I, I agree with that. So he was able to see someone that was on multiple seasons and learn from their mistakes. That way he hopefully doesn't make those same mistakes. Now, this is something I mentioned last year too. Every year, there's always someone that comes in and cooks, cleans, does everything to make everyone feel at home. And because of that, they stick around a lot longer than they probably would have normally. And I think that Tommy might be that guy this year. He said he want, he's going to make a bunch of Italian food. He said he's going he's gonna to just make everyone happy. He's going to cook. He's going to clean. Because, frankly, there's a lot of young people in here that are disgusting. And I think it's going to I think it's gonna play well for him. Uh, his biggest weakness, in my opinion, is that he's very confident in his one strategy. But I'm not sure how he'd react if things don't go that way. So he has a good strategy coming in. Um, but what happens if people, you know, don't like his cooking or like they think that he's trying to clean just to butter people up when that's what he's doing? Like what happens if people see right through it and he has to think on the fly? I'm not sure how he's going to do because he's so confident that his strategy is going to work. And sometimes you need to you need to be well rounded and you have to, you know, expect the unexpected, as they say. I think he's a, a he's got a great attitude. Um and, and he should just get along well with everyone. I don't really see him having much of an issue, and I don't see him as someone that's going to cause a big threat in the beginning, but who knows. Uh, moving over to Catherine. So uh, Catherine Dunn, she's 29. She's from Dallas, Texas. She's a digital marketing executive. Um, <laughs> she Her interview was very, very interesting. She's 29 years old. Um, and this is not a good sign for me as far as America. Could she do well in the season? Yes. But when the only two checks that I, I can give you objectively are that you're attractive and that you're a floater, that's really tough for me. I mean, I think she's just going to have to use her looks as an advantage and get one of those boys wrapped around her finger and hope that they are doing well in competitions and that she gets in an alliance because – I can't see her just running through everyone. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that I, I just I don't think she's going to be good entertainment value. But who knows? She might be a firecracker, might get in some fights and make some good TV. She said that she basically can't survive without her phone. She's a marketing executive. Um, and her social game might suffer because, as we know, people are completely different online than they are offline. And if she's been so used to being glued to her phone 
that she's already like freaking out before the season even starts about not being on social media she's gonna really struggle with making personal connections with people and and i think that that's what the game is all about um so she was literally covered in glitter during her interview with jeff um it's just it was everywhere i was like okay um her social game is questionable and she says she cries a lot she says she's one that just she'll go and she'll have like a good cry and then she'll get over it like 10 minutes later but if people see that she cries over every little thing they're gonna they're gonna get sick of it really quick people are heartless in big brother um yeah um so now now someone that i'm seeing as a crowd favorite um a lot of people really like kemi so uh kemi's 25 she uh is from maryland but she currently lives in new york um, once again, New York, right? And she's also a marketing strategist. So um, her and Catherine both basically have the, the same job. Um, so she is all about personality, um, having fun, being social. Um, but then she also has the, uh, I'm definitely a by any means necessary sort of woman. I'm a, you know what? Uh, this is a sad truth. Uh, when I feel provoked, I can be extremely vicious. These, now, God, I, we're going back to the typecasting, guys. I really hope that she's only saying this so that CBS would cast her. I know that sounds horrible, but I don't know why they have to always portray the women of color as the in-your-face, angry, um controversial figures and they always only put one on the on on the show like i don't understand why it always has to be this way because she seems like such a great person and i know she you know she she typed this she definitely typed this but to me it just seems like they only want one type of person when they're casting women of color and it's really really frustrating same with same with the asian women so i mean it's it's just so tough you know but whatever that's just that's just a personal gripe um and you can agree with it or not uh going over to the excel sheet um i think kemi is very very smart i think she is gonna be really oh oops i forgot to put she deserves a check for friendly too um so she's she's the 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 rare friendly yet abrasive uh personality i think to where she she's gonna be both um she seems very smart, very put together. She's obviously very attractive. Um, and she really has a good plan. And I think she's going to win the boys over because she's, you know, what, what I would call a good hang. I mean, the the guys are going to want to hang out with Kemi as more than just a, I want to hook up with you. Like, the guys are going to be like, no, nah, Kemi's cool. She's cool to hang out with. And if the other girls start getting catty with stuff, maybe she will separate herself from them and she'll be a much better game player um, because of that. Next up, we have Jessica. So Jessica is a plus size model. Um, she's from Chicago, currently lives in Oak Park, Illinois. Um, so still stayed within state. Her age is listed as 30-ish. I don't know if she like didn't give her actual age which would be a little weird but it says jessica 30 ish and so i put a question mark i mean that's a little weird to me um and once again she's she only got a couple checks from me uh friendly and a floater she just kind of um i don't know i i think her her answers are okay um what cast member do you like the most dan from season 10 perfect mix of smart and funny conniving and yet such a well-liked guy he played a great game and absolutely dan did he's one of the best players ever um she she's sad about having to leave her her family and friends she has a husband and kids and stuff so she'll she'll be um avoiding all of the the hookup drama thank god um i don't grow much under underarm hair and i don't use deodorant because i don't sweat under my arms okay i'm a big diy girl and love learning new things so i learned a lot about myself including cutting my hair sewing my own clothes and taking my own photos so she seems like a self-made um success story the issue is that um she is she yeah th i think she's she's definitely the biggest person in the house as far as just not, not you know height or whatever but 
you know, she's she's a little chubby, but she's really cute. I mean, she's she's a model, but I don't think that the house. See, I would I find her attractive, but I think I think a lot of a lot of people in the house are gonna be like, ew, she's disgusting. The the girls are gonna seem a little offended because she's a model, and they're gonna be very judgmental towards her, um, just based on what I think. And and who knows, maybe the guys will like her, but she seems to me like one of the easy targets to get out early. So she's gotta survive the first couple weeks. Next up, we have Cliff. This is my guy. <laughs> Cliff Hogg the third, age 53, from Houston. He's a petroleum engineer, so I'd imagine he probably makes quite a bit of money. Um, what I thought was funny is that his adjectives are funny, stubborn, and caring. I kind of like how he, uh, he had the two good ones, and then he put stubborn right in the middle. He likes fishing, jet skiing, swimming, scuba, gardening. Um, I mean, you can just take a look at this guy. You know this guy. We all know this guy. We all know a Cliff Hogg. Um, so he likes the strategic players such as Derek, Vanessa, or Dan, but Vanessa's whined too much when she thought the chips were against her. Favorite of all time has to be Derek. That's my, that's my boy. Derek's my boy. Um, and Steve's my boy too, because I met Steve and he was just awesome. Um, he wants to present himself as a loyal soldier to one or more strong players while creating enough chaos or paranoia to have people pointing figures and targeting each other. People will assume that I'm a loyal kind of guy because that's how I live my life in the real world. Um, and then he's not afraid to betray some people. So what I love about Cliff is that he is not your stereotypical, you know, old guy where he – we always see these people come in and they're like, oh, just because I'm old doesn't mean I can't win competitions. And they come in and they're just not good at comps. And people are like, well, their whole claim to fame was going to be that they were a great competition player and you know they're going to be great socially and all this and that and then they just end up fizzling out so quickly and cliff in his in his interview with jeff was like hey i know i'm the old guy and that i need to lay super low and just be friendly with everyone for the first two weeks i think he said he's he said it's going to be two weeks of getting rid of strong social players then it's going to be two weeks of getting rid of strong um competition players and then he can start going to work after week four. And I think that's a great strategy. Um, I think he's got a great mental game, super friendly, um, but he is a schemer. And he his strategy is to float, uh, which a lot of people don't like. He's a big fan of the game, but which a lot of these people that are fans, they, they should know that floating is how people have won the game um, recently. Not everyone, but yeah. Um, he's very wholesome. I think if he makes through week three, he'll be strong. I think he's got a good strategy there when he said that that's his strategy is to, you know, get a, get strong players on his side. Um, he's the old guy. They're always an easy target, biggest weakness. Um, and then he's married with kids, and he has a great strategy and will get along well with people. He's got a good head on his shoulders, but he needs to come out and start strong in a few competitions to prove his worth with a pot potential alliance. I think that if you're – if you are the old guy, you – if he comes out and finishes, you know, fourth or fifth in the first competition – People will be like, hey, he's likable, and he's not that much of a threat, but he did okay, so he could be of use to our alliance. You can't just be part of an alliance because you're cool. You, you, is, people want you as part of your alliance for a specific reason, and if he, there's no reason for him to be in an alliance, the house is going to split in two, he's going to be stuck in the middle, and he's going to be an easy pick to throw out by either side one week when, the, when someone doesn't want to rock the boat. So, um, Cliff just has to play his cards careful. Next, we have Ovi, Ovi Kabir, um, and he's 22 years old. He's one of the younger people in the house. Um, if you look, I gave him friendly. He's also a fan and a floater. Ovi is very underwhelming. Um, he, he's from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. He's currently a college student at the University of Tennessee. Um, favorite activities, rowing, partying. I just feel like this is our number one candidate to make a fool of himself in the season, which I like, I don't, I don't want to be that judgmental to people that I haven't seen on TV yet. He might be one of America's favorite, just fun loving people. He's going to be interesting with the parties and he's probably going to prank people and he's going to do all stuff like that. Um, but I, he like, look, I mean, look how much he typed. I think he likes to talk and he likes to party and people are going to get sick of it eventually, but who knows? Um, he wants to bring a power T Tennessee pin. He's just so into Tennessee. It's really funny. Like he mentioned 
the University of Tennessee like seven times in his interview with Jeff. Um, so seems like a lot of fun. Plans on being part of an alliance, blah, blah, blah. Um, something he said with Jeff. He says he has a tendency to want to take charge. And in my opinion, natu natural instincts always come forward. So if people say that they're going to do one thing, but they have a tendency to do the other, um, that's an issue. And also, when, when we're talking about going to make a fool of himself, um, he has a girlfriend outside of the house. Um, and he's 22 years old. And he just wants to please everyone. And he's going to be in the house with a lot of attractive girls that might want to take advantage of him. Um, he seems a little young and naive. And uh, I got to admit, I'm a little biased. My ex went to Tennessee, so I hate him. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't actually hate him. I just want to put that in to be funny. But, um, but no, I mean... I don't see Ovi doing too well in the game, but he could absolutely prove me wrong. Uh, next up, we have Nick. Everyone's making fun of his hairline, but I mean, you know, it is what it looked better in the in the face to face interview. Um, he's from New Jersey, once again, New York, New Jersey. Um, he's a therapist. He's outgoing, caring, talkative. He likes to talk, which is funny because he's a therapist. Usually, it's his job to not talk too much. Um, I caught a foul ball at a Phillies game off the bat of Cliff Lee. Okay. Um, talks a lot about baseball. He wants to be an NFL. He completed classes in the scouting academy in order to become an NFL scout. So that won me over a little bit. <laughs> he wants to be an NFL scout. Um, and and there are some good things about Nick. He, I'm very back and forth about him. He seems like he's going to play a, a, a good mental game, but he said that he's very... Um, well, we'll talk about it after. I, I think his positives are that he can use his experience as a therapist um, to help him if he's a good listener, which literally that's his job is to be a good listener. I think it could play into his hands a lot. Um, but he said that he has a tendency to just kind of tell people how it is. And he's like, he told Jeff something along the lines of, oh, well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check people. Oh, I put it in the general comments. He's not afraid to check people if they're being ridiculous, which they're going to respect that he, um, that he like kind of checks them. And they're not going to respect it. There's too many young people in the house. I'm sure a lot of his patients are older that he works with. And people that are 21, 22 years old do not want you to tell them that they're doing anything wrong. Like, you need to coddle their egos. And, like, I'm 26. I, I When I was 21, I wouldn't have wanted some guy to be like, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. I'd be like, I'm in the same game as you, buddy. Like, chill. And then he would, he'll make an enemy. So the fact that he thinks that people are going to respect the fact that he tells them when they're being stupid or when he thinks that they're doing something wrong, I think he's sadly mistaken. People are going to definitely take it the wrong way. Uh, we have Jack. Um, he, in my opinion, is definitely one of the stronger people. He looks like, uh, looks like Aquaman. Can't remember the guy's name, but you know I haven't seen Aquaman. But uh, he's got he's got the four you need. He's got physicality, mental game. He's attractive. He's friendly, and I don't think he's someone that's going to be scheming, floating. I think he's going to play the game um, pretty aggressively, which could be bad. Um, I think he's an overall great guy. If he can keep his composure, he'll be great. The ladies are going to love him. My God, any girls that are watching this, I know that you guys were waiting for me to get to Jack because you're like, oh yeah, Jack's the guy. You guys love Jack. Um, everyone everyone is going to love jack uh jason momoa that's his name because everyone he, he thinks everyone's gonna start calling him jason in the house which would be funny um he's gonna look intimidating to the other guys um which is bad because the other guys are gonna target him quickly and he's also emotional like he said that he cries all the time <laughs> like he's really emotional which once again the ladies watching at home are gonna love they're gonna be like oh my god i love when a man is in touch with his feelings um and and so He's going to cry all the time, get the sympathy card from the ladies. So I think the girls are going to love him, but the guys are definitely not. They're going to think that he's trying to work him over. Um, and guys aren't going to want to align with a guy that's that's all caught up in his feelings. So if he wants to have an alliance with guys, I think it might be hard for him. Um, he looks promising. The women will all go nuts for him. Said he cries all the time. So we'll see how he keeps his emotions in check. Um, it's kind of a wait and see with him as far as uh, personality in the game next up we have jackson so we have a jack and we have jackson uh this dude literally looks like like you can name one guy on every big brother season that looks exactly like jackson you guys already know him all right he's 24 hometown is nashville tennessee he's currently living in los angeles as a server um he likes exercising social events hunting um what do you think will be most difficult nothing seems too difficult that i couldn't endure um 
he said after a week or two i'll feel comfortable and forget i can't sleep naked drop my towel etc um he and, and then this this was what worried me a little bit so which past big brother cast member do you like the most paul and brett are kind of the two that he likes which i mean you, i i hate to judge a guy this much but you can look at this guy's face and be like yep you could see Paul and Brett in this guy. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, going over to the chart, I gave him a plus for physicality. He's definitely athletic, um, definitely attractive, but he's he's definitely a little abrasive. Now, something I love that Jackson said was that he wants to play hard for the first HOH. And they're almost all of the guys that Jeff or guys and girls that Jeff asked about in the interviews about if they wanted to go for that first HOH. A lot of people said, no, I don't want the first HOH. Um, and I, I guess I'll talk about this now. So let, let's go over here. Here is a list of all of the people that have won the first HOH. I found this on Reddit and we're going to, we're going to go through and, and do the seasons following this. So week nine, or sorry, season nine um, was the last time that someone won the first competition and was voted out pre-jury, with the exception of Willie, season fourteen, who got expelled. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna say Willie's a wash, right? Because you know who knows how far he would have gotten if, if we wouldn't have had the incident. Probably not that far, but who knows? So if your goal if if your goal is to at least make it to jury, which most people would say. If someone said, okay, you're not going to win the game, what's your next goal? Oh, well, I would at least like to make it to jury, right? Everybody, with the exception of Willie, since season 10, has at least made it to jury. Hayden and Rachel have both won, right? So that's all the way up through season 17. Then on season 18, look who won Look who won the, the first comp. Nicole. Okay, so Nicole won his first comp. I'm not going to count BBOTT or Celebrity Big Brother, right? And then season 19, Cody, who finished jury, right? Cody made jury. And season 20, Tyler, our runner-up. So this fabrication that people, this flat-out lie that people have, have made up that you should not win the first competition because it puts a big target on your back. I think winning the first competition guarantees you to be part of an alliance because people say, well, we know we know that that guy or girl is strong. We know that they're strong, so we need them as part of our alliance. We don't want them winning competitions and then voting us out later on down the line. Winning the first competition is a great strategy now. I don't know why people think that it's this giant hindrance because – it used to be that people voted out the strong competition people, you know, quickly. Like, you, you look back here. You know, pre-jury, pre-jury, pre-jury. I mean, but even then, a lot of people made the jury, at least. And some, some have won the game. So people thinking that you can't win the game when you win the first competition are just making that up. There's no sense in, in throwing the first competition. So Jackson has the right idea there. Um... And then a couple other things about Jackson. Let's just scroll over. Um, so I said I said that his biggest weakness was that he's going to pattern his game after Paul and Brett. I don't think that's the way to do it. I think Paul was in a very unique situation with his second season to where people just were just bowing down to him. And he just – CBS helped him out with that, with that power early on. And uh, Paul just got the silver spoon. Um <laughs> General comments. He said he tells it like it is. Sometimes not the best thing. Over to Christy. Christy is 28 years old. Um, she's from Staten Island, New York, currently in New Jersey. Once again, New York, New Jersey connection. Um, she's outgoing. She's an overachiever and edgy. She likes to go to the park with her dog. Her dog is literally like her life. Um it's the she said the hardest part would not be able to talk to whoever's running my store um which yeah it, it hang it happens um she she's the whistling girl um she's a musical person i'm the whistling girl i'm always either singing or whistling so i'm definitely gonna miss music you would not be able to stop me from singing i would make songs in the big brother house i'd be like big brother i don't care if you give me a guitar or not 
I'm going to like make an acapella group in there and like make original songs. I would absolutely do that. Um, so I plan on using my sexuality as a major social advantage. I'm going to the house as an openly feminine lesbian. I'll use my femininity and charm to easily persuade and subtly manipulate the men while also being the emotional shoulder and best friend to all the girls. I also won't pose as a threat to the women because I won't be after any of the men. At the same time, I won't be a physical or athletic threat to the boys. Little do the guys know, though, I'm super competitive and an extreme overachiever, and I plan on winning a lot of competitions. I have a photographic memory, and I'm also killer at puzzles. So I love that answer from her. Her interview with Jeff gave me a little bit mixed signals from that. I do think that she's very well-spoken. Well spoken. She's going to be friendly. I didn't put down that she's attractive, but I, I think I'm going to change that. Like, I, I think she's cute. I just I put it down there at first because I was like, well, I, there are no other lesbians that I know of um, or even girls that are bi um, in the house. So it would be hard for her to actually, like, hook up with people so people might not find her attractive. But that's true. I mean, a lot of the guys aren't going to care. They're going to be like, whatever. You like girls? Who cares? Um, it's kind of an open invite to flirt, so whatever. Um, I don't consider her one of the biggest physical threats in the game. Um, and she is a bit of a schemer. She's got a big plan, but yeah. Um, I think she's focused. She's going to be very well liked, um, in the house, which is obviously a big deal. Um, she's self-labeled as emotional. And she said, quote, what you see is what you get. Um, and she's a lesbian, but she's single. So she's going to use that to her advantage. Uh, we only got three left here, and then we'll just do a couple uh, overriding things. Trying to go as quickly as possible, but I feel like you guys appreciate, you know, going in depth a little bit. Plus, I missed you guys, so I gotta, I gotta go in a little bit. Next, we have Sam Smith. No, that, not that Sam Smith. This Sam Smith. Um, his hometown is in Pennsylvania. Currently living in Pennsylvania, he's a truck driver, but not a long haul truck driver. He's back every night. He made that very clear to Jeff. Um, he likes to play basketball, pool parties. He's gonna be missing his family. Um, he does have a wife and kids and stuff like that. So, um, he just seems like a really nice guy. Um, the only issue is once again, looking over at my chart, um, friendly floater fan, the three F's, not what you want. You do not want the three F's here. All right. Um, he, to me just seems like he has such like so little personality, um, Shouldn't be voted out too early because he plans to fly under the radar. So at least that's good. He might make it to jury just on that. Um, he openly just wants to float. Doesn't really have much of a personality. Um, married with married with kids. Floater city, I put. I'm not really going to go too into Sam. Um, really not that um, Really not that into Sam. Got to be honest. I don't think he's going to be good TV. Someone who is going to be good TV, in my opinion, Annalise. Sorry, Annalise, not Annalise, Annalise. Um, she's born and raised in California, still still lives there. She was a college soccer star. She's 22 years old. She loves tanning and going to the beach. If tanning could be an occupation, that would no doubt be my calling. <laughs> um, she's not going to be able to see her dog, another dog person. Um, it will be difficult living with the same people for so long, but I know I can handle it because I've done it throughout college, which is a valid excuse um my strategy for winning the game is to play both sides of the house but keep it super low key from watching previous seasons the people who seem to always play both sides of the house tend to go really far i'll not let anyone i will not tell anyone i was doing this even my best friend in the house because it will blow up in my face i'll try really hard on comps that i know i need to win and not so hard one not so hard on ones that will either ruin my game or show i'm playing both sides so um she she cannot start her day without a cup of coffee stuff like that she um i'll, I'll be honest annalise is my girl this year like she's she's great i once again haven't put together my rankings even though you guys already saw them i'm going to put them together right after making this video but she's going to be very high on my list she might even be number one i think she probably will be but um she's gonna be able to flirt with the boys she's got a great body um the boys are absolutely gonna just fawn over her um and she's gonna be a comp beast soccer is such great conditioning she's gonna do great in the condition in the comps where you need great conditioning she's a bit of a schemer um but she's seen the show she's got all four of the check marks we look for in the beginning um which her jack and david are the only three that i gave i gave all four to so 
Um, I think she's in good shape. I think her biggest weakness going into the game is that she wants to play both sides of the house, which could blow up easily because sometimes, some seasons, loyalty is where you need to have it, uh, where, where it needs to be. Um, but playing both sides has worked for a lot of people. Uh, she's a gamer. She has a great strategy going in, but she needs to make sure to not play too hard too quickly. If she's someone that tries making an alliance on day one and people aren't feeling it, they will see that she's a physical threat and that she's charming. The girls might get... Uh, like, you know, jealous of her looks if they're also trying to play the boys because she already said she's going to start playing the boys. Um, she hopes, like, there's single boys and stuff like that. So um, we'll see. We'll see how Annalise does. And then finally, last but not least, we have Bella. Um, she's 22 uh, from New Jersey, once again. Um, she currently lives in Los Angeles. And she's a public health analyst. Um, her answers, for the most part, were very short. Uh, spontaneous, reckless, and generous. Favorite activity, spending other people's money. Um, what's the most difficult part? Nothing. Um, what past Big Brother cast member did you like most? I liked when Isabella Wang won season 21. Do you have a strategy for winning the game, bribery? I I know that she's very... Um, I know that she's joking, you know, like this was funny. I need someone to fill my lash extensions every two to three weeks or I'll look like a thumb and not a pretty house guest. Um, I think, I think that she, people will like her, but it's about it. She's got, she's got two of the three F's. She's friendly and a floater. That's it. Double F. She's, she's double F's. Um, she was really into fitness for about six months and lost 50 plus pounds. Sounds like me. Um, that'll be me next year. I'm trying. So, um, I don't know. She she seems okay, but I just I'm not too into Bella as a uh, as a as a house guest. Uh, she brings a lot of positive energy. She'll always be cracking jokes. We'll see how far that takes her. She needs to rely on others. She will definitely struggle if she's isolated. She could be out in the first couple weeks. She could be someone that gets brought all the way to final four, final three, and gets cut at the end. She she's one of those those uh, competitors. She is super super high maintenance. Uh, she seems to me like someone who will break down as the grind of the game goes on. Not talking about necessarily, like, physically. But I think the longer she's in the house, um, I think she's going to get more and more isolated. And she's going to get more lonely. And I just think that she's someone that the, the length of the game, if she does last a long time, is going to really start to eat at her. So I'm worried for Bella uh, in that aspect. So... Um, just, just keeping, uh, just keeping some, some common things in mind. So we have, um, six people either from New York or New Jersey or currently live there, right? So, uh, we have Tommy, Kemi, Nicole, Nick, Christy, and Bella. All of them are, are from either New York or New Jersey. Six people all from the same area. Do they know each other? Have they ever passed by each other? Um, are they going to use that as a New York connection to make some sort of alliance? That That's going to be very intriguing to me because they're all going to talk about New York, New Jersey. They got the accents. I mean, I know for a fact that if I walked in and someone had a Boston accent, I'd be like, yep, let's hang. Like, I, I love it. That's my people, you know, and I think New Yorkers are going to are going to be the same way. Um, seven people in their bios or interview with Jeff mentioned that they'd be sad without their dogs or that they'd love to bring their dogs into the house. Um, is it time for Big Brother to to bring a pet in? Um, wh what would they what would go into that? You know, um, they had a pet. I think it was a dog um, in one of the seasons, like a long, long time ago, like first five seasons. Um, and I don't even think it was for like the whole season. But, um, you know, is, is this something that, that Big Brother, that CBS would look into, getting dogs? Because so many people are like, oh, I would love to have a dog. You know, seven, seven people, that's basically half. That's one shy of half. Um, and that's just the people that mentioned it as like, oh, my God, I'll be so sad without my dog. Like, there's got to be someone else out there that has a dog that just didn't mention it. Um, Jessica, Catherine, and Kemi are all in the marketing industry. Once again, um, will this be something that they bond over? Um, and, and if so, Kemi is the one that is marketing and from New York. And so that, I think that sets Kemi up 
well for um, having common uh, common interests with people. And then um, talking about the HOH rule again, just it feels like no one wants the first HOH, um, which to me is a fabrication. It's just people over the recent years have said, oh, you don't want to win HOH. It puts a big target on your back. And I don't want to ramble on and on about it, but um, I just, frankly, I think it's a lie. I don't, I don't think you... Uh, I don't think you need to lose the first HOH. I think you should win the first HOH. That t- Talk about, you know what makes you a lot of friends? Controlling potentially who goes home first week. That makes you a lot of friends, whether that's fake or real. And it at least makes people talk to you. You don't have to go to the HOH to make sure you're safe week one. If you're HOH week one, they come to you, you get to call the shots, and you, if you want to play the game quickly, like Jackson... If you want to play the game quickly and make an alliance right away, if you win the first HOH and you tell people, hey, let's make an alliance, they're going to go with it because they don't want to go home first. No one wants to go home first. Everyone's scared to go home first. So I don't know. What do you guys think about this season? Um, What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Um, Do you guys agree with, you know, it looks like for me the front runners might be, you know, David, Annalise. I think Kemi's got a good shot. I like Tommy, Jack. Um, you know, what, what do you guys think about all these people? Um, and then someone that I, I said was not good, you know, Bella or Sam or, or Ovi are, are those people that you objectively look at and say, I, I just flat out think you're wrong. I think that this is why they're going to do well. Um, because there are plenty of ways to win big brother. They've been won a bunch of different ways. You can win a bunch of comps. You can win no comps. You could float. You could be an alliance. You could do a lot of different things. And uh, that's what makes Big Brother cool. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Um, and please give a like and subscribe. And click the bell. It's like here somewhere. Something. Maybe down there. I don't know. So you know when we go live. Um, and until next time, guys, I can't wait for BB21. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh... Yeah, see you later.